Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. So y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer so y'all can shoot if y'all please. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Chat Sports Report, the CS Report. I'm Tom Downey, and I'm fighting Al King. His Twitter handle is AlKing906. I'm at What Going Downey. A little fantasy football podcast for you. You excited, Al? I'm very excited. Uh, I've been waiting for this to happen, and it is finally happening. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the start of fantasy season myself. Uh, a little bit later start for me than usual. Uh, Probably because I was trying to find jobs and stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll be starting full-time uh, with Chat Sports out in San Francisco in mid-August. So looking forward to that. And then Al will be still uh, alongside me online. So. That's pretty awesome, though. I'm yeah. proud of you, Tom. Proud of you. Thank you, Al. You'll <laughs> be out there soon, I'm sure. I hope so. I hope so. Although, this is going to get serious conversation really quick. That video about the earthquake... And Pacific Northwest really terrified me. I don't know if you saw that. It was like a week and a half ago. Uh, I don't know if I did. Okay, don't. Don't? don't okay. Don't watch it. Don't do that then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited that you get to go out there, and I'm excited, hopefully, that this time next year I'll be able to join you out there in San Francisco. And like you, this is a bit of a later start for fantasy football. I'm, I'm usually – around May, starting like right after the NFL draft, starting to look at stuff and and kind of obsess over who I'm going to pick and why I'm going to pick them. But this year, looking for jobs and other things, I think, has, yeah. has held us both off. Yeah. Always a little bit weird with that. Uh, but let's start uh, news updates. We'll bury the lead a little bit with Tom Brady, uh, and we'll start with Le'Veon Bell. Good news, I think, for everyone except whoever, whoever the Steelers play in week three. Yeah, which I believe is the Rams. Um, he misses, I think, the Niners game. I don't remember the other one. So, I'm sure you enjoy that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. The Niners will still lose, though, because they're going to be awful this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I wasn't going to say anything to you, but, <laughs> but yeah. Six and um, ten, maybe? I don't know. That's pretty mm. bad. Uh, but w- with the one game reduction in his suspension how do you think that affects his stock uh i've been going back and forth whether he's a top five pick with the three game suspension and i myself wouldn't personally take him in the top five if he had the three game suspension now that it's dropped to two i think i think the four or five range is probably the smartest place to go you could even argue going earlier but I'm just not a fan of drafting guys who are going to miss two weeks and then come back. What if he takes another two weeks to find his rhythm? Then mm-hmm. there's four weeks right there. And if you're in a head-to-head, that's a quarter of your season. Mm. I have him five right now. Uh, if he didn't have the suspension, I, I think he might be as high as two for me overall. Um, I mean, that, that's where he finished last year was second. So I, you know, I, I am a little bit worried about the suspension, but he was really good last year. So I, I think he'll stay the same. It just depends on how confident you are in, it, in being able to get through those first two weeks without your first overall pick. Right, and something that no one's really been mentioning, and it might be because it's not a big deal, but he missed last year's playoff game because of a knee injury. And if it was that bad to where he wasn't able to play in a playoff game, it had to be somewhat severe. Uh, and he, he's been quoted recently saying that his knee's almost 100%. So if it's not 100% by the time the season starts or by the time the suspension's over, that's something to worry about as well. Yeah, it is. But halfbacks are so important and to, to get good ones early because there just aren't as many. Right. You kind of got to take a risk at some point. So. Moving on to Brady now, the the bigger news, his four-game suspension upheld. Uh, How does that affect his stock compared to if he wasn't going to miss any games? (sighs) Tom Brady is a cheater. He breaks his phone. Uh, (laughs) So I think it's going to go to court still, but since it was upheld by Roger Goodell, which is a four-game suspension... 
I think that just means that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to come in, take the starting job from Tom Brady. Brady's going to not be yes, and Brady's going to not be a Patriot come Week Five. He's going to be on another team. Uh, wouldn't that be great? The way he replaced be, Drew Bledsoe. That'd be pretty funny. But but, uh, but if we're being serious, I guess I think he falls out of the top ten mm-hmm. uh, as far as rankings now. And I don't know if he even finishes in the top 10 by the end of the season. Um, what do you think? It, I think it depends on, on how you judge the rankings as to how he finishes. I think if it's a per-game basis, then he probably finishes right around 10. But if it's just overall, I don't think he finishes in the, the top 10 because those four games are just, are just so important, especially with, with QBs. There's like a, a two-point-per-game difference between... I think uh, like the seventh and the thirteenth quarterback from last season. So the so just with that, he drop out of the top thirteen probably. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's it's a big time uh, decision by the NFL to do that. And you know, Tom Brady has been one of the golden boys of the league. And I mean, we'll see if the suspension actually does go four games, or if him suing allows him mm-hmm. to play the whole season. So it, I'll ask that if that's the case, if he is able to play the whole season, where is he for you? Uh, probably in the nine to ten range, somewhere in there, and then and, and, and there's not a whole lot difference for me between you know seven and eleven as to where they end up going in the draft. So somewhere in, in that range. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd have him about the same. Chat Sports is personalized news and scores shared with friends. Thousands of sources from ESPN to local blogs create Chat Sports curated news feed. Fans choose favorite teams and follow friends to get every breaking update. With live scores, play by play, and original content, Chat Sports is the best way to share sports with friends. So let's transition now then into the, the bulk of today's. Show uh, AFC East team previews. So New England, Miami, Buffalo, and New York. I see what you well, did there, Downey. I see yes, what you yeah. did there. That's 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 why I buried Brady a little bit. <laughs> uh, so we'll have a safest pick, a sleeper pick, a bust pick, and then we'll hit all the rest of the guys in positions that we may not have gotten to. And again, safest sleeper bust is all relative for you know the teams that they're on. Uh, so we'll start with with New England. And Al, I'll give you a first shot. Who's your safest pick? Uh, it's probably got to be Rob Gronkowski. You're probably in agreement with me. I'm not sure. But uh, I don't see how you get any safer. The guy had 130 targets in 15 games last year. That's mm-hmm. just under nine per game. And even with Brady, if he does miss, the, miss those four games, mm-hmm. uh, Garoppolo's going to be looking for Gronk. I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah, I'm totally on board there. It's it's Gronk. He's the best fantasy tight end by far. It's really not even close. The one thing that has me just a, a little bit uh, concerned about him is that I think Scott Chandler might end up vulturing a few touchdowns from him. But I, th- I think Gronk's going to have enough yards that it's really not going to matter too much. I forgot yeah. Scott Chandler was even there. Yeah. He's a touchdown, the Bills. touchdown machine, that guy. He is, which is why I got mad when I would play him. In, in like a bye week, and he, and, you know, and didn't have, score for me because he'd have like one point, like, <laughs> one catch, five yards, that's, but that's it wasn't a touchdown. Guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, sleeper, then, who do you have? Man, I was high on this guy last year. I was high when he got drafted. Uh, my sleeper is Aaron Dobson. I actually lost a bet. I made a bet last year with a guy in my, uh, I guess you could say, my home league that Aaron Dobson would have a better year than Julian Edelman. And uh, I owe him lunch. So <laughs> Interesting pick. Uh, I don't have him as uh, – he's not on my big board. So Not even on your big board. He's, he's not even on my big board. Um, maybe once he starts to consistently catch passes, he'll make it. <laughs> but until then, I think he's stuck behind Brandon LaFell as, their, as the Patriots – not short white receiver, um, <laughs> but my sleeper, and it, it's New England, so it's kind of relative here. Is James White uh, sleeper is a, you know, I guess because 
no one really thinks he's going to do much. Mm-hmm. Um, I He's barely on my big board, but I, ha- I kind of had to pick somebody here. Um, but Patriots did spend a fourth-round pick on him for a reason. He was really good at Wisconsin, and it's Belichick, so he likes to do weird stuff with his halfback. So maybe he just gives the ball to, to White a ton. Yeah, well, and Blunt's missing week one. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, if James White can show – his worth in that first week against the starting defense of starting NFL defense, mm-hmm. then maybe he carves himself out a role. You know, you don't, you never know with the Patriots, like you said. And then Ridley's in New York, and Vereen is also in New York, just different teams, Jets and Giants, respectively. So I would think Tr- Travaris Cadet takes over most of the PPR duties for Vereen. And then I don't know what Jonas Gray is going to do. He had the one big game, and that was like it. Yeah, everyone picked him up, and then he was the forgotten man really quickly. Yeah. He, I'm pretty sure he was in, inactive the very next <laughs> I game. I think he, he was. That. I think he was, and he was like a top waiver wire ad for a mm. lot of people. The Patriots, Flat, man. Classic the Patriots. Belichick right there. How about Bust? Who do you have there? <laughs> Brandon LaFell. Brand- oh, okay, I because think, Dobson? I think Aaron Dobson beats him out uh, at some point this year. Maybe not to start the season, even though LaFell is on the pup list right now. He's just considered day-to-day. But I do think Dobson ends up playing well enough to overtake Brandon LaFell, and LaFell becomes a complete bust. And he's not even getting drafted that high, you know? But people are drafting him, thinking he might duplicate the numbers he did last year or, you know, maybe just a little bit less. But I don't think he even gets near because of my infatuation with Aaron Dobson, whatever it is. LaFell was 22nd last year among fantasy wideouts. And all, all these stats just assume an ESPN league since that's what most people use. Not that there's much difference between ESPN and Yahoo and the others, but I, I don't think he has that kind of year again, LaFell. But I still think he's worth having as a, as a backup. Um, my bust, I thought about putting down Brady just because I think he's going to miss those first four games. So mm-hmm. You can't really justify taking him as a top 10 QB. Uh I think Blunt could be a potential bust, especially if White kind of takes his role. And and, and, I, and it, it's New England, so they're all going to share the ball amongst the halfbacks, so it's tough to kind of rely on him to be anything more than a, a flex play, I think. Huh. I, uh, I'm i a big I know, believer there, in LeGarrette. There isn't, yeah, there, there isn't really a, a player that screams, oh, this guy's going to have a terrible year. Right, it's no, all, he'll, he'll perform a little bit below expectations. Yeah, I think... I don't know. I think where he's getting drafted right now is pretty good for his value because of his touchdown potential. That's true. Um, but at the same time, he's had off-field issues. Who's to say he doesn't do something stupid mid-season, yeah. and next thing you know, he misses more than one game. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. That would That's definitely true. make him a bust. Mm-hmm. So, covered most of the players. Uh, Edelman and Amendola are the two I also wanted to hit. What do you? What are your expectations for them this this year? Man, I I just don't know how Edelman does it. I really don't. Um, <laughs> when when the Patriots sign Amendola, I think everyone just wrote off Edelman. Yeah, and that has been the exact opposite. Yeah, that's. I felt the same way. I was like, you know what, Amendola's there. Sorry, Edelman, not going to be your team. And now he's the wide receiver one on the depth chart. So, I mean, you have to respect Edelman's game and what he does. And of course, he gets a big bump in PPR. He does, uh, yeah. But I think he is what he is. I think what he did last year might be – that was probably his ceiling last year, I would have to say. Yeah. Um, he finished 27th last year, and he missed two games. Okay. So his ceiling's probably around 20. I think I have him higher in my receiver rankings just because once I get outside the top, like, 15, it's all just kind of a mess for me. Man. From about 15 to like 27 or 28, like they're all like the same player and I don't want to take any of them. Yeah. Or I, or I at least want to wait. Um, but yeah, I think that's about his his ceiling. Yeah, I have him uh, 22nd on my um, rankings and I actually have him between two AFC East wide receivers. Okay. So, um, okay. But yeah, I, I think 22 would be... I think he might be honestly overachieving what, what he can do, but yeah, who's to say he won't? And then Amendola, 
Uh, for me, it's just he's he's worth owning if if he stays healthy, but I I don't know if he can actually stay healthy. Yeah, he he's always he's one of those oft injured that is actually uh, true to the case of being often injured. Um, I don't see him staying healthy this year either, which which is you know it's tough because he's a talented receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember him in St. Louis, and I was like, well, who is this white guy? You know, like, <laughs> this guy can play, you know? I remember he was on the Cowboys mm-hmm. for a very brief time, yep. and I loved him, and I was really mad when they cut him. And then I, I wasn't that surprised that he did well with the Rams for that little bit, but he was so injury-prone, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. You guys got Cole Beasley now. We do. I do love Cole Beasley. I'm all about <laughs> Cole sanity. So. Great slot receiver. Nothing more. <laughs> uh, anyone uh, and else it, on the Patriots you want to uh, talk about? None for me. You? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we've, huh. we've hit them all. Oh, wait, wait. Kickers are people, too. Oh. Oh, Gostowski is the best fantasy kicker by far. Okay, that's far enough. Concerned. Okay, we can move on. Um, I actually really like Gostowski. <laughs> no, me too. Uh, he's I, good. I always, I think he's finished top two the past three or four years in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that there's much difference between kickers, but I'm I'm the kind of guy who takes a kicker before a defense. So because I refuse, I, I refuse to invest anything in a defense. Yeah, I take kicker before too. I always target the same kicker every year. So we were, I was in a fantasy league or in a fantasy league and I was sitting next to a guy and he took the Seahawks defense last year in like round nine. Uh. And I punched him in the arm. And I said, <laughs> you're an idiot. What are you doing? And then they didn't have a, a very good year. So well, we sit back. You know, in all the mock drafts that we do, the, the, they go ninth, 10th round, you know, it's the, because the auto pick I know, them. I know, I know. auto pick loves defense. I don't understand it. It's funny. You can tell when people are like kind of first timers or new to fantasy, when they start taking defense and kickers yeah. middle yeah. rounds, it's like, yeah. what happened? What? All right. Got to draft my starter. Right. <laughs> that's, that's what happened to the Jaguars when they took Brian Anger in the third round. <laughs> Uh, all right uh moving on now to the miami dolphins i'm curious as to as to where we fit on on this team al so i'll let you start with your safest pick this one was tough um but i i put jarvis landry okay uh i think going into his second year he was a, a target monster for Tannehill last year and I think it's only going to continue this year. Um, so, I mean, that's my reasoning behind Jarvis Landry. I don't really have much much else. That one was tough, like I said. Uh, I, don't, I mean, the Dolphins don't really scream any any safe pick because that, that tends to imply that, oh, they're going pretty high and, you know, they'll produce like a top five player or something along those lines. I don't think they really have that guy. I'll, I'll go with, with Ryan Tannehill. Um, he finished eighth last year among fantasy QBs, and now he's got a better team around him. So, and he's spoiler. He, he's also my sleeper because he's being drafted the th- as the thirteenth quarterback behind guys like B- Tom Brady. So, okay. so question. So, if he's your safest pick, is he going to finish eighth or higher this year? I, I I think he very well might. Yeah, or at least somewhere right in that range. You're gonna make and, me draft Tannehill, Tom. And well, he's well. The thing is, like, I'm not even drafting him in most of my mock drafts as a QB one. I'm taking him as my second quarterback because he's still on the board mm-hmm. because he's the 13th QB off. So I, I just take like nine and 13. And I've got Tony Romo and Ryan Tannehill, and I'm doing backflips. So. <laughs> I can't do a backflip, so but uh, I, I will take. I have been looking at Tannehill as my second quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been taking a lot of Matthew Stafford. so mm-hmm. I have Tannehill ahead of Stafford. Do you? Um, yeah. Stafford finished 15th last year, and he throws a, a lot of interceptions for me. I know, I know. Who's your sleeper then? <sighs> okay, you know Nevada, the school that I yes. am going to, they are a Mountain West team. And I've been a big Mountain West Conference follower my whole life. 
Therefore, I know the Boise State running back with all the knee problems in the world, Jay Ajayi, yeah. um, has a lot of talent, and the Dolphins are scared to run, mm-hmm. run, run with Lamar Miller. Yeah. And Ajayi could very well end up being a goal line back for them. So along with touchdown potential, I think he also can average 10 to 12 carries a game. I, I, I could see that happening. And the Dolphins don't have much depth behind Miller. Nope. It's uh, Ajayi and Damian Williams. So that doesn't really scream loaded backfield. Um, I kind of wanted to pick, honestly, I wanted to pick the whole team for the Dolphins uh-huh. because they're all like being really underdrafted. Like yeah. Lamar Miller and and their injury concerns that I that I know about. Um, and again, the, he's a little a little bit smaller than most uh, full time backs, but they don't really have a whole lot behind him. He was eighth last year, and he's being taken on average as the eighteenth halfback. I don't think he has a top ten season again, but he should be going before eighteen. He could have a top ten season, honestly. If they, if they, I don't know why they, they limit his touches, you know. And he can catch the ball out of the backfield as well. Um, mm-hmm. I guess it's because they're trying to keep him healthy, and he's not yeah. as big. But mm-hmm. I mean, give the guy twenty carries, see what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I I think he's only been over twenty carries twice in his whole career, and only over fifteen like six times in his career. And mm-hmm. he's been in the league for two years now, so they just don't like to hand him the ball that much. Um, I'd, I'd also consider Landry up there because he's got wide receiver two potential, I think, but he's kind of being drafted outside the 30s for the most part. Right. And then no Mike Wallace, no Brian Hartline. It's his second year. He could have a, a breakout year. I'll also throw out Jordan Cameron. If if he can stay healthy, that's that's a big if. But he's, he's a few years removed from a Pro Bowl season when he had Brian freaking Hoyer as his QB. so And, and now he's got Tannehill. So, he, I mean, he kind of goes outside the top 10 sometimes at tight end, and I, and I kind of want to wait this year for that position. So I have no problem taking Cameron. I was very and, close to putting Jordan Cameron because I I am a believer in him. I actually took him in the like fifth or sixth round the year after he had that Pro Bowl season in Cleveland. And I was, you know, jumping for joy about that, thinking I can't believe I got this guy who has potential to be a number one tight end, you know, in the sixth round. But the Dolphins, they always had Charles Clay, and he always produced pretty well. Mm-hmm. And Jordan Cameron arguably is a better player than Charles Clay. Um, he's And he's a little bit more of a deep threat, too. Right, right. I think. So I think Cameron's a good pick for sleeper. Uh, is there anyone else on the sleeper list you wanted to mention? No, I mean, you said, like, the whole team. I, said, I, said, I, did, I did say sense. the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, then you, you can pick bust. How about that? Uh, do you have a bust? I do have a bust. Okay, I bet it's the same person. All right, who's your bust? Uh, Kenny Stills? Uh, I, I, I don't mind that one. I had somebody else in mind. Oh, okay. I, I think Stills works. Um, I, I think for the same reasons, though, that we think. So... After you, Al. Yeah, I think Kenny Stills is a bust because Jordan Cameron's there. Greg Jennings is there, Mm -hmm. Uh, which, yeah, he's old. He's a veteran, but Kenny Stills is just never – all he is is a deep threat to me. I think he's a one-trick pony, and he's still working on his route running. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if if it's going to be polished enough for him to make as big of an impact as many people are hoping. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I do think he is a bit of a – one trick pony, like you said. I think he can run go routes, and that's kind of about it right now. Uh, I I think he'll see a little bit drop in targets going from Brees to Tannehill because there is Landry, there is Greg Jennings, who was actually my pick for the bust because he's older. I think he's just gonna kind of drop off as the year goes on. And Devontae Parker's there as well. I forgot, uh, but I, I, forgot I Devontae Stills. Parker. I think he's he's not worth taking high. But he's worth taking late and just hoping that maybe something happens. Yeah, one of those late round flyer guys. I don't see any yeah, exactly. any problem with that. Because um, when you're drafting that that far down, you're really not expecting much. No, you're drafting for what could happen. Right, and no. and I think the reason why I put him as my bust is because I have heard some places, some rumblings, that people are pretty high on Kenny Stills this year. Now that he's mm-hmm. 
not New Orleans, not behind Jimmy Graham, not behind Marcus Colston, not, you know, all mm. those guys that were there in New Orleans. They think he might take a step forward, but I, I don't, I think he is what yeah. he is. I, I agree. Anybody else you wanted to mention then on Miami? Um, wait, Caleb Sturgis. I don't mind Sturgis. I uh, did I do kicker ratings? I did. Hold on, let me pull these up. <laughs> he didn't make my top twelve, so I think I'm just gonna do that for every team. So that's just gonna yeah. be my thing. Where I'm just gonna before we move on, I'm gonna yell the kicker's name. Yell the kicker's so, name. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you're okay with that, I'm fine with that. All right, let's move on. Then hang on one the... second. One second. Oh. Latest report on Caleb Sturgis, June oh. 4th. He suffered a left quad injury in a team-organized kickball event. Okay, so don't draft Sturgis. Is, 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 is he hurts himself in kickball. Here. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> okay. All right, Bills. Um, oh, boy. Uh, you can start. Is safe pick? Uh, my safest pick is LaShawn McCoy because of the usage and where he's going. I mean, he's, he's getting drafted in the second round, uh, in 10 mm-hmm. team leagues, which, so question really quick before we move forward. Do, when you, when we talk about rankings and, and draft spots and stuff like that, are you going off a of 10 team or 12 team leagues? 10 team leagues. Okay. Me too. Okay. okay. Um, so my safest pick is LaShawn McCoy. I think, like I said, he's going in the second round in 10 team leagues and, He's going to get the ball so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Greg Roman there, he likes to run first. Mm-hmm. Rex Ryan likes to run first. And plus, I mean, who are they going to pass with? There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Ty He's the Rod answer. Taylor. He's the answer. <laughs> I actually really hope that Tyrod Taylor wins that job because he was so much fun to watch at Botech. I'd like to see him win that job and just see what he can do. Uh, mm. Matt Castle certainly isn't going to do it because, I mean, it sounds like he might not even make the final roster. I don't know. I, I don't know if you read my Bulls or Bills preview I that I have. I have um, I, I have all three quarterbacks listed, and they all just say nope. <laughs> that's that's all they say. Cause it's just just don't even bother taking them. But McCoy was my safe pick as well, okay. um, for the same reasons you mentioned. So uh, sleeper pick, can you have one for me here? Oh man, um, I put Percy Harvin. <laughs> okay. Uh, so reluctantly, I put yeah. Percy Harvin. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's even being drafted right now. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't see, I've done plenty of mock drafts already and I don't know if he's ever been drafted in any of them. I certainly haven't drafted him in any of them, but Dude, I'm not going to draft him in any of them. But I mean, he's so talented. Even if he is the most hated player in the NFL, he has, <laughs> you know, he has mm-hmm. the tools to succeed. Yeah. So. He just kind of isn't a, a great teammate at times. He's a sleeper pick every year, and that's why he's yeah. a sleeper pick because he never performs. I, I I think I would consider him a sleeper pick if you know he wasn't dealing with Matt Castle and EJ Manuel and Tyrod Taylor as his, as his quarterback. Right. <laughs> um, I put Sammy Watkins. Okay. Um, he was twenty fifth last year. He should be better this year. He just doesn't have a quarterback. I know. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. And that's what upsets me. His, his, he's got, like, wide receiver one fantasy potential. Yeah, he's talented. But he's, he's not going to top anything more than a wide receiver two because he's got nothing at QB. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Where do you have Sammy Watkins ranked? I don't know if you have your rankings pulled up. Uh, I think he was caught up in that 17 to 20 group. Yeah, he's at he's at 18 for me right now, one ahead of Edelman. What's so, that? I, I actually have three straight AFC East receivers. Does it go? Does it go? Sammy Edelman Landry. 
Uh, Marshall's 20 for me. Brandon Marshall. Landry's 27 for me. Whoa. So, um, knowing th- knowing full well that he'll still be on the board when it gets to my 27th receiver. So Yeah. Um, I don't... I like Sammy Watkins, but his quarterback situation is just... Yeah. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. So bad, but I mean, I can't say that about him if I have Percy Harvin as a sleeper. Yeah. So. I'd, I'd also throw out Robert Woods if Buffalo ever gets their quarterback situation figured out. Because I, I like him quite a bit. He's just... You know, as the second or third option on a team with a bad QB, that's not exactly a gold mine for fantasy right. success. Right. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Um, do you have a bust? Um, I, I, Fred Jackson? Let's just go with him. Okay. Uh, mostly because he's the oldest back in the NFL, mm-hmm. which seems really weird to say out loud, but he is. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have some concerns about McCoy. Um, he was 12th last year, even though he didn't score as much as the other halfbacks, which kind of dr- drove his end standing down a little bit. But the Bills' offensive line isn't as good as the Eagles. And he's, he's only 27, but he's got a lot of wear on those legs. So I'm just I'm just there's just some minor concern with me for him. I he's still worth taking at the end of round one. So, do you uh, have have a bust? Uh, <laughs> mine is Sammy Watkins. Okay, <laughs> because of the QB situation. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Um, and, and the reason why I have Harvin as a sleeper, even with that same quarterback situation is because of where he's getting drafted or, you know, he might be even getting undrafted. So, yeah, but the bust factor for Watkins, I think he's going like fourth round and that's see, that's too early for me. And there's, yeah. And there's other guys I think I would take there before I'd take, you know, like Mike Evans Mm -hmm. Before him, uh, yeah. maybe Kelvin Benjamin before him. Those those kinds of guys I would maybe take before Watkins. And I think the people that take Watkins before him will then find out that he's somewhat of a bust. But he has, um, don't get me wrong. Like, I put in my notes, I put, not saying that he will be a bust, but he could be. Because he is super talented. I mean, the kid is, yeah. he's amazing. And he has wide receiver one potential, like you said. It's just the guy slinging the ball to him. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Clay with Miami. Well, now he's in Buffalo replacing Scott Chandler. Mm -hmm. Um, But no QB can't really take him. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's off my draft radar, too, unfortunately, because I love Charles Clay. I would take him. He would always be my tight end, too, or my Mm bi-week filler. You know, That's kind of what I... Used him as as well. Right. Um, yeah. Anybody else on the Bills you want to talk about? Wait. Dan Carpenter is there still. Uh, I have him. I have my fantasy, I, I have my Excel kicker rankings because I refuse to put those online because <laughs> they're kickers. Uh, I, I have him 10th. So he, he finished 4th last season. There you go. So Finished 4th in your top 10. Sounds like a draftable kind of guy. Draftable kicker right there. All right. Bill's done. Let's go to the Jets then. Uh, also, oof. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go first again. The New York football Jets led by super talented Geno Smith. Nope. And the Amish don't, rifle don't even Ryan think about Fitzpatrick. It. I love the name the Amish <laughs> rifle for him. That's so perfect. Um, so my... Safest pick for them is Brandon Marshall. Uh, I mentioned earlier I'm a little bit higher on this Jets passing game than I probably should be. But I think having Marshall and Decker on the outside with Amaro running up the seams, Mm -hmm. um, 
I think if the quarterbacks can figure it out, they have decent weapons around them to succeed. Jeremy Curley could still be in the slot. Devin Smith, the rookie from Ohio mm-hmm. State. Uh, Burner. Yeah, deep threat. So, I don't know. I think I think Marshall's the safest pick just because he's the veteran. He's going to demand a lot of targets there in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just what will he do with the targets. And I, I think I don't think Marshall's done yet. I don't think he's done either, but going from Chicago and the past happy Jay Cutler offense, uh, interceptions there too, but that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, to New York and Geno Smith is a huge downgrade, but he's still the safest pick because it's the Jets right now. Uh, I have him as like a, a lower-end wide receiver too or a really good flex, but I, I, I don't know if his days as, as a wide receiver one or uh, a- anymore. I think that those days m- might be over. Yeah, I have him ranked uh, a little bit higher than you. I have him ranked 16th, actually, uh, ahead of guys like Emmanuel Sanders, yeah. Keenan Allen, Golden Tate, and DeAndre Hopkins. I, I don't take much issue with that. I, I have Tate fairly low. I have, I have Hopkins at 15. Do you? That's where he finished last year. But the, the Jets and the Bills, and I'll throw in the Texans as well, are three of the teams that go, maybe go, man, if they had a quarterback, they could be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they don't have a quarterback. Right. And the Texans are still pretty good. Right. With no QB. Well, so. J.J. Watt could probably play quarterback for them if you really mm-hmm. wanted to. He could play every position. Uh, how about a sleeper then? Have it, anything there? Yeah. Uh, I put Eric Decker just because of where he's mm-hmm. getting drafted. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm – a believer in Geno Smith all of a sudden this year. I don't know what made me flip the switch to saying, yeah, okay, I think Geno Smith can do it now. Because uh, last year I was a complete non-believer. But mm-hmm. I I have hope for him now that Rex is gone and that there's a new offense in town. So mm-hmm. um, I have Eric Decker as my sleeper for that reason. Well, I have Zach Stacy slash... The Law Pal, and I don't like that, but mostly because I wouldn't draft them in any league. Mm-hmm. Um, but Changeli's offenses have tend to favor smaller, qu- quicker backs, which Stacy and Paul and Powell kind of fit in there. Stacy, of course, left or forced away out of St. Louis. Didn't really get much of an upgrade in carry wise or numbers of carry. And Chris Johnson took almost all of Powell's t- touches last year, and he's gone now. So you know maybe. Maybe they do a little bit that can justify owning on a bye week. I don't know. That's that that, that that's all I got for them. I I always liked. Bilal I tried, Powell, but uh, I don't know. Like you said, a bye week filler or something. But I mean, he's behind yeah. right now. He's behind Ivory Ridley and mm-hmm. Stacy, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really want any of those halfbacks. So yeah, no, that's a backfield to avoid for sure. Yeah. And it just screams, we're going to share touches between everybody. Yeah. So hey, that nobody has any value. Hey, everyone, we're going to do 20 carries a game. You all get five. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. That's what it screams. <laughs> How about bus then? Anyone jump out to you? Um, I honestly didn't really have one. I, I put... I put Jay Samaro down, but he can't really be a bus because he's never been anything. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't... I don't think I really have one, unless Geno Smith falls on his face. Who's yours? He hasn't done anything. I have Ivory. Um, okay. Because he finished 19th last year. Yeah, I owned him. I was happy about but, that. But I don't think he's going to get anywhere near the amount of touches with Steven Ridley there and Zach Stacy and Blah Pal. So I just kind of want to avoid all of them. Yeah, that's um, actually a really good pick. I'm, I'm upset that I didn't pick that. Good job, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you mentioned Decker. I I think he's better as the second option on a team. Mm-hmm. He was 28th among fantasy guys last season. I think he goes down a little bit, but he's a backup. Maybe a flex on a bye week, but not a whole lot else for me. Right. And then Curly, Devin Smith, and Jay Samaro all kind of jump out as good young players. Curly in PPR leagues especially, but they need a, a, a QB to kind of make them worth taking so they're kind of in the same situation the bills is well hey i I like this guy but 
he's just not going to catch enough passes. Yeah, Devin Smith is an explosive athlete. Curly's pretty mm-hmm. explosive himself in the slot, mm-hmm. but uh, Devin Smith really can take the top off of a defense, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. Um, but like you're saying, with the quarterbacks, it's not going to be enough to make him fantasy relevant. Mm-hmm. He'll be a fun guy to watch. But, he will be fun to watch, yeah. But not a fantasy guy. Anybody else you wanted to hit then? Um, how about Nick Falk? What do you think of him? You have him in well, your he, rankings? He and I, he and I don't get along. Um, you know, he's an old Cowboys player. He missed uh-huh. a lot of. I don't know. I don't just. I just don't care for him. Dan Bailey stole my heart, so it's okay. <laughs> so he's not um, even on your rankings, huh, Nick? Falk? He didn't. He didn't make my rankings. No. Um, he's got a strong leg. He's just a little bit inaccurate at times for me. So. Yeah. And plus, I would prefer Car- Carpenter and Gostowski. How much will the Jets even score is a big question, too. You know, and the- Well, the, f- the flip side is, are they going to get close enough that they just kick field goals? Kick field game? goals, right, right. I think that's what happened to Dan Carpenter last year when he finished fourth. Yeah, probably with Buffalo. I. That's why, honestly, so my kicker, we're, we're going to talk about kickers here for a second. Wow. That's okay. The main kicker that I take every year is Matt Bryant. Okay. Because the Falcons love to move the ball downfield, and then they get around the end zone, and they're like, where's Tony Gonzalez? Where is Tony Gonzalez? And they He's don't score, there. and they kick yep. field goals. Mm-hmm. I always go Gostowski, some variation of Gostowski, Bailey, and Justin Tucker because he went to Texas, and I love them. <laughs> um, also, they're all like pretty good. Yeah, but I think are. one year like they all went before me, and I got mad and started throwing stuff. And then I realized I was getting upset about a kicker and just immediately calmed down. Wow, that's too funny. I also like drafting kickers that play in domes. Matt Bryant plays in the game. Yeah, that, 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 that does make sense. Like what you're hearing? Check out more fantasy football content and much, much more content at chatsports.com. Again, that's chatsports, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com. Um, where do we go from here, Tom Downey? I think that's it. I know we'll be back on shortly. We can do AFC North. Okay. So, and then we'll keep going through the rest of the divisions. Okay. Mailbag? Question mark? Yeah, we could, uh, send out, we, we should make an email address before we do a mailbag. You should. You should. So, that's probably a good idea. So that could be next episode. <laughs> yeah. Or we can ask on Twitter. What the, yeah, what the email address s- should be? Send us your questions on Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah, we um, could do that. But then they're limited to 140 terms. Or letters, true. I mean. I, I would bet a large amount of money that uh, csreport at gmail.com is available. I would, I would agree with that as well. So, all right. Well, let's just send everyone there. See ya. <laughs> And if it's not, um, surprise. Right. And if it's not, and if it's not, we can just update it in the SoundCloud and iTunes. Okay. Then. So csreport at gmail dot com. I'm gonna write that down so we don't forget, even though it seems okay. pretty simple. It is us. <laughs> so. Um. I do kind of want to do one one more question for you. Okay. This feels like a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Um. Who do you take first, Brandon Marshall or Julian Edelman in a PPR league? Edelman. How about in a standard league? See, the funny thing is I have Edelman above Marshall, Uh and I want to say Marshall, and I go, I should probably change that then. Um, But I I probably pick Marshall because I I think his upside is just a little bit higher than than Edelman's. Yeah, I think like we said earlier, I think Edelman is right around his ceiling. Yeah. So, and and we know that Marshall's ceiling is higher than that, but with the Jets, who knows? Right. Right. So. All right. I think that'll do it for us. Then, unless you got any other questions you want to throw out there. No, that's it. I just pick. I'll try to pick one of those every show. I like that. All right. Well, then that should do it for us. For Al King, I'm Tom Downey. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to follow at Al King nine zero six and at What Going Downey on Twitter. 